Hi, this is uh, U.S. Mental TV. I'm Matt McCourt, your host. Most people know me uh, for putting out five records, The Ravers in 1981 with Jay Reynolds from Malice and uh, Wild Dogs, the first one like on this T-shirt here. Uh, that was 1982 and uh, Man's Best Friend with Wild Dogs, 1983. And then I put out uh, Dr. Mastermind in 1986. It seems like... That's all anybody knows, but I've recorded 31 or 32 other records. The first one was King of the World. I came up with that title because uh, the guy who did the uh, the Abyss and uh, the Titanic, uh, what was his name, James, he won so many Oscars that year, he, was, he kept saying, I'm the King of the World. I thought, that's a great album title. Anyway, I wrote a song called King of the World and uh, with Michael Brown and Pete Lofman. And we used to record down here every time we practiced. And so we, we wrote a lot of, so the only band that really had that really wrote songs besides the original Wild Dogs. And, uh, that one is, uh, we have like 17 songs on that. That one is on all these, all these albums are on U.S. metal records at the site. And, uh, King of the World, that's a great record with great playing. Michael Brown was an amazing guitarist. And I started playing with him right after Dr. Mastermind. He was like the local guy to play guitar, and uh, we just be, were friends forever. And then after that, uh, there was a thing called Higher Education, which uh, eventually became a lot of songs on a lot of other albums. But I did uh, um, Down and Dirty. It has... Katie Monique on the cover, and uh, I kept putting all these, finding all these records. The first one we I actually put together was uh, "Out for Blood," which uh, is in Discogs, and uh, I never made CDs of it. Actually, I, maybe I did. I can't remember. But it's for free. A lot of these records I'm going to talk about today are on the freebies page at uh, usmetal.com. Just scroll down, find the the banner that says freebies, and click it, and uh, there's all kinds of. There's like 24 records on there that you can click on and download and, you know, it, it won't take up any shelf space. Well, uh, I did Sin Sandwich. It also has Katie Monique on the cover, and I made this <laughs> cool picture out of one of her poses as a model and uh, made it was like a, she's eating a sandwich and, you know, Sin Sandwich. And uh, that was during the time I was recording with the, the mentors quite a bit. And uh, I did like five or six records as a Church of El Duce. Those are all up there also because I just didn't have the the funds to make CDs anymore. So we sold out. All those at the freebies page are ones that I'd made a hundred of and then realized that CDRs aren't uh, what people sell. So once they sold out, uh, I just stopped making them. So they're all free. Steve Broy, I must say that uh, he got me back into recording big time. And uh, he would come up about every month and we would record like six, seven, nine, ten. We'd record a whole album over a weekend and make up everything as we went. It was great. Really great music, like a, a musical workouts with Bryce Van Patten playing drums on most of it and uh, at his studio, Man in Black, here in Portland, Oregon. And uh, let's see, I, I was going through all kinds of tapes, and I found the uh, the original Wild Dogs Live first show live in San Francisco at uh, The Stone, which happened August 20th, 1982. And uh, we played with Culprit and uh, Mike Varney's band Cinema, and Brad Gillis was the guitarist that would do stuff in between bands, just an unaccompanied solo. And uh, you see, MTV was there, and... Uh, they were, they were following up. See, that's how I found Mike Varney was on MTV. And uh, a guy named D, uh, what's his name, J.J. Jackson, the VJ. He said, you better stick around if you've got a guitarist, a band that's got a great guitarist. Stick around and get a pen. I'll give you this address and you can send him a tape. And so I did. And that's how that all started. Headbangers Open Air. 2008, we played at, in Germany at the Headbangers Open Air Festival. And uh, there was a guy that was recording every set and would sell you the the tracks, the Pro Tools tracks, really uh, cheap. So I bought them and made a CD. I think I'm the only guy that ever has made a, an album from playing at that festival, and uh, it was great. <laughs> live at Headbangers Open Air, Better Late Than Ever, uh, live in Germany. That's also for sale at uh, usmetal.com. 
And uh, let's see, what do we got here? Oh, Born to Rock Forever, which is the, the last thing that I did. There's, I'm skipping through a whole bunch of them. It's not in order. Born to Rock Forever. It's got a cartoon that this guy, Mark Merriman, made of me that was in this record store on this giant picture with uh, Twisted Sisters, D. Snyder, and ACDC, and Rob Halford. They're all cartoons. But uh, I wrote a song called <laughs> Born to Rock Forever, which is kind of funny. And I, I, I wrote the lyrics after seeing Dean Castanova, the drummer, uh, on TMZ. And <laughs> one of the lines is about, I, 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 saw, I hung out with the queen in my underwear. But... Uh, that's got some good stuff on it. It's got some redos of other records. I did Southern Fried Steel, um, which is a Southern rock album kind of deal. And um, a couple of blues albums called Psychedelic Metal Blues Experience. And uh, the second one is really good called uh, um, The Sun Always Shines on Me by the Matt McCourt Psychedelic Metal Blues Experience. And uh, I play a lot of the instruments. Dave Hathaway played drums on a lot of those tracks. And uh, let's see, uh, oh, I did Live at the Roseland, which is out of print. And uh, that was uh, Wild Dogs with Mike and Pete uh, opening for Dio, I think, is where that one came from. And we were spot on. That was that band rehearsed four times a week, and we were just ready to go all the time. It was great. So that's a great album. That's also free, and uh, take it. <laughs> There's Ring of Blood, which is... Uh, Kevin Sanders from Gargoyle he hated the singer from Gargoyle and he didn't like his voice ever and he always wanted me to sing he said and uh, we were working together at the time and he brought this over in a bunch of weed and said hey make a record and we'll call it whatever you want so I made it. he always wanted to be a wild dog so I thought I'll make it a wild dogs record <laughs> so I sang on all of the Gargoyle tunes because he erased all the tracks <laughs> and uh, put it out with one of the pictures. The cover pic was uh, a shot from from when I was producing Portland Wrestling for Warner Brothers here in Portland, Oregon. And uh, I think it's Bart Sawyer on the ground with blood all over his face. There was a match where uh, he said, "Bring everything." You know, the, the, encourage the audience to bring anything, and they would toss it in the ring, and then they'd use it. And uh, it was pretty brutal. Wrestling is not fake. The pain is not fake. The outcome is always predetermined. But the uh, the blood and the pain and I mean all these guys he's, are dead now, man. Um, yeah, down and dirty. That's uh, it's kind of like ACDC meets uh, Wild Dogs, and uh, there's some great tunes on that record, man. And uh, Katie Monique, she was our host for the. U.S. Metal TV Euro special on Valk and Open Air, and her and Anthony Drago, and uh, there's some great songs on that. It's pretty, you know, a lot of a lot of times. Here's what happened: I would go to uh, Bryce's studio with about three or four tunes each week before he had a session. We'd uh, record my songs, the basics, before the other act got there. So the paying people. And then I'd take the, the masters home and I'd put them in my machine and then I'd finish them every week. So I was working steadily every week on new stuff. You know, before Dr. Mastermind, I had a band called uh, Evil Genius because the Wild Dogs was not listening to my songs I wanted to do for the third record. So I had a, a band that uh, would do demos with Kip Doran and uh, Ken Goldstein and Ben Linton and... Uh, I recorded, and then I, I got kicked out of the band, and they they replaced me. I went to a meeting with Black and Blue and Night Ranger playing at Portland, and I went. It was two nights. I went to the first night by myself with Kip and his friend, and uh, Angie, my wife, and we had a great time with the band and and a bunch of blow up. The uh, you know it was just a, a, an amazing fun time uh, to be <laughs> balanced out the night next night where uh, I went and the rest of the guys showed up, but they were sitting in different sections. So they weren't sitting with me. There was an extra guy that they brought with them. And when we got onto uh, Night Rangers or the crew bus, Jeff said, introduced, uh, I'm Jeff, the guitarist, and this is our new singer. It's like, oh, well, gee, I didn't know about that. So I just started Evil Genius, and uh, we went into Recording Associates where we recorded most of the 
the first uh, well, the first album of Wild Dogs with Bob Stoutenberg uh, as engineer, and uh, that whole set is on the uh, of Doctor Mastermind before and after. You see, Doctor Mastermind was evil genius. And I had that band started in like 1981 with Kip and Dave Koenig and uh, Sean Carter, who were in uh, Chris Newman. And if you're from Portland, you know Chris Newman is the legendary guitarist from uh, Navon Beach and the Chris Newman Deluxe Trio. And uh, we recorded two or three songs and uh, then I got busy with Wild Dogs because we got a, a deal with Mike Varney and Shrapnel. And... Uh, but uh, I kept going, you see. And so uh, when I got kicked out of the band, I went back to Evil Genius with Ken. And uh, those songs became the Dr. Mastermind record. So that record is all about before Dr. Mastermind and after. And uh, all the lineups after that with uh, Michael Brown and Pete Lofman and Robert Robinson and uh, Troy Stutzman and Vito Sin and Dave Hathaway. So there's a whole bunch of stuff on there. Oh, hey. Another album that I put out called Evolution, which is, <laughs> it's just other versions with other singers. I got the guys who, uh, who who replaced me to send me the songs that they recorded with Jeff and the, and the band. And uh, some of them were ones I already did, like Rank and File. But I put all these alternate versions on this one record, and I thought I'd feature, you know, the, you know, the history of the band is important. The legacy is it's important to me. Uh, oh, Dr. Mastermind. Yeah, I did re-release re, re the Dr. Mastermind CD, but I put on some live clips from our show at the Starry Night in Portland, Oregon in 1987 and uh, some other stuff, and one from Boris Haranki, who was a, a Dutch guy, a guitarist that approached me, and, you know, I'll pretty much record with anybody, right? <laughs> I'm just that kind of guy. Let's do it. It's making music, and... Uh, that's pretty cool. It's got a lot of stuff that aren't, is not on the regular studio versions. That some of them, they sell for like 40 bucks, But uh, you can get it from me for 5 4 99 actually. After Wild Dogs kicked me out or replaced me, let's put it that way, the second time, they didn't tell me that time either. And uh, I found out from the manager, and then I called everybody like four or five times. So, so you know... Am I in the band or not? Because I was thinking we could make it a great last farewell show with me. But nobody would be honest with me. They all said, no, you're not, that's not the deal. So what I did was I got dressed up as Dr. Mastermind and uh, went on stage and <laughs> said, thank you, good night, and uh, <laughs> left. They looked for me for like 20 minutes or more. I had a car parked up the street. What was even more funny was I had about a dozen or more people in on this thing. And they all, I said, okay, now wait till I leave and then wait for a while to make sure I'm not coming back. Then go and ask for your money back. And all these people didn't pay to get in. They are all my guests. <laughs> so make sure you cover your stamp up and just ask for your money back. In fact, demand it kind of angrily and so we made like 150 bucks on <laughs> refunds on people so yeah I, yeah I make things work for me and we partied at the villa and uh, and the next day I got asked to join mayhem and uh, Steve Hanford who I'd known since he was 11 years old he bought the first him and Steve Nims bought the first wild dogs t-shirts not this t-shirt by the way I've got t-shirts for sale at usmetal.com T-shirts and all these records I'm talking about are available at usmetal.com. So Steve called me up, and we've been hanging out, and uh, and uh, he said, hey, uh, you want to join Mayhem? I said, yeah. And uh, so the guys, I love the guys. They were great people. And so uh, I joined up with them. We did a record. We did a ton of gigs. We played with Rock Power from Italy. We played it with Hyrax in 1985. Uh, oily blood men and a whole bunch. Of, we had just played a lot, you know. You know, we recorded the uh, Burned Alive record at the same studio. I did Wild Dogs and Evil Genius, and let's just leave it there. And then uh, after that happened, uh, the whole band. I had, I had introduced Steve to Poison Ideas. Pig Champion, the guitar player, who was my friend from like 1978. I taught him how to play guitar, and. Uh, 
I said, you know, you guys would get along really well. I said that to Eric Frey, too. And uh, he was a drummer in Imperialist Pigs. And uh, Imperialist Pigs, that's a tough one to say. So uh, I produced that. I produced the Pick Your King record, the first EP by Frozen Idea. But uh, Steve took the whole band over and joined Poison Idea. And that was like the legendary legacy band of that that Poison Idea lineup. Later on, Kevin Sanders from Gargoyle joined, took uh, Veg's place, Eric Olson, usmetal.com, under the CD. You'll see the four, the Wild Dogs, and then the Dr. Mastermind and Mayhem record. You just click that banner, and it'll take you to that page. But the Freebies banner. I'm giving away 24 records, stuff that I had made 100 CDs of, and uh, they were CDRs, not press. And i just not going to invest in a bunch of money. So it's all for sale on iTunes, but I'm going to give it to you if you are listening. You go to usmetal.com, scroll down to the freebies page, and uh, it's right there for the taking. So free, take one. And uh, I think I'll get going here because I can't think of anything else. And uh, I've just done so much stuff that I've lost track. There's like, I do know I've put out 36 records or 37 <laughs> or, and uh, uh, well, you'll find them. My name is Matt McCourt. This is U.S. Metal TV, and uh, I'm your host. So keep watching and uh, watch that cable show. The, the listings are on the Macoma Vision page on usmetal.com. And if you don't have cable in Portland, you can just watch it right there on the site because I embedded it. So you can just watch it at your leisure. And isn't technology wonderful? <laughs> Thank you very much. And uh, I'm Matt McCourt. And I'm the wild dog. I am Dr. Mastermind. And I'm also the singer in Mayhem. And I'm the Ravers, the legendary teenage rock and roller. So uh, I got no complaints. I've done quite a bit of stuff here. And uh, I'll see you later. Thank you. Good night.